across the heavyweight scene and he told me why recently he described Anthony Joshua as the future of boxing. Hey, listen, because he has the potential to do a lot of things. Because he got the look and he's throwing those hard punches and he fought a good fight. He went down in that fight. He didn't have to get up. He got hit with a good shot and he got up kind of slow. But when he got up, he finished the job. Do you see any parallels, Mike? Here's a young man with so much expected of him, in this country at least at the moment. I don't know, but he's a happy guy. He's one of those happy fighters. He's always happy, saying nice things to people. Do you think that Anthony Joshua has the ability to reign for a long time, Mike? If he doesn't let his head and his emotions get in the way, he can, yes. He can't get the big head. He just got to focus on fighting. Once you start focusing about money and girls or whatever it is outside of fighting, things are going downhill. You only got to concentrate on fighting. No religion, no nothing, just fighting. Do all that stuff after the fight is over. Do you think now, Mike, that you would be better able to cope with all of those distractions outside the ring? Hey, no, I, I, I wouldn't want them. I wouldn't want them but would at you any be able, age. Would you be able to fend them off in the way that Joshua's going to have to? Hey, I don't know. This is going to be a, new, a neat trick. We're going to find out. He got so much pressure on him. When I was in Dubai, they had big posters of him in Dubai. Yeah, so his name is spreading around the world, like like yours did so quickly. Yeah, he's getting up there. But listen, what, what do you go think's happening with Tyson Beth, Tyson Fury? Yeah, Tyson Fury at the moment um, is awaiting a hearing with the UK Anti-Doping Agency about uh, a controversy oh, regarding... Um, a drug taking allegation um, last year. Hey, you year. know, so um, the heavyweight championship, the heavyweight championship would drive people crazy. You know that, right? What is it like, Mike, to be wearing that crown that's, you know, for so long has been known as the richest prize in sport? Is it heavy? Hey, man, it's like um, the, the crown of thorns, man. Everybody wants to test you. Everybody wants to do this. Everybody wants to use you for something. It's the heavyweight champion of the world. It's like being the president of the United States an office which is now held by a friend of yours, Donald Trump. What are you making of his progress? Hey, he's doing the <laughs> best he can. Going back to, to Anthony Joshua, Mike, and, and you, you referred there to Tyson Fury. If those two were to meet, given their respective performances against Klitschko, how would you see that fight going? Hey, we have to watch and see. That's one fight I like to see because even though people think Tyson Fury is a, a, a joke sometimes. He really knows how to fight. He puts it together. Klitschko couldn't land a, he- a heavy punch on him. So let's see if Joshua can land that heavy punch. Has what Joshua has done reignited interest in the heavyweight division in the United States, Mike? Or has that Absolutely. Not yet happened? You know, you, you know he did. You know all the heavyweights are looking out for him now. Dante Wilder has improved a lot, but I, I believe that... Um, that um, Joshua could be them. I just think Joshua is just um, his, his time. I could be wrong. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not the gospel of boxing. But he really he impressed me with Klitschko. He's <laughs> fast too for a big guy. He is, yeah, yeah, and, and determined as well. Yeah, that's very. That's what counts more than anything. One of the fights that's being talked about out there, Mike, is being dismissed as a, a circus and a freak show. Floyd Mayweather against Conor McGregor. What do you make of the prospect of that? Hey, I don't believe that's going to happen. And if it happens, if they're boxing, it's not going to be good because, you know, Conor don't stand the chance if they're boxing. They only stand the chance if they're using the UFC fighting skills. If it's just a boxing match, that's not going to be a fight. If you were invited, would you go along? Yeah, I would. <laughs> yeah, I would. <laughs> you know, I, 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 think, I think that's the attitude of everybody to it, Mike. You know, nobody wants to see it, but everybody will go and see it. <laughs> yeah, that's just what it is. I just think, I just like Conor. Conor is a personality. He's a big personality. We ain't going to get any, it's very rare to get a personality like that. See, Floyd don't have that personality. Conor got that personality. Which which is kind of what you brought to the ring as well, Mike. Everybody yeah. knew that you were fighting. I remember going to Vegas for many fights and, and quite often um, at one end of the strip, you wouldn't know that the fight's taking place. But when you were in town, everybody knew. Hey, those were the good old days, but listen, now is Anthony Joshua time. Let's see, can he handle that stuff? Okay, Mike, we appreciate your time. Thanks very much for hey, joining us. Hey, pleasure's mine. Thank you. Seems like he's in a happier place than he's been for some time, Stephen. And, and talking, I thought, with interest there 
Respect for Tyson Fury. Yeah, you know what, Mike? Didn't that come out? I mean, I wrote that down there. You know, people think he's a joke, but he could, that guy can really fight. You know, and and there's something about that in the first part of the interview. He said he became a boxing groupie. And we know that he watched boxing tapes supplied by Bill Caton and Jim Jacobs from their archive, the greatest archive in history. Everything you watch, basically, I'll just tell you this, everything you watch from before about 1990 is owned or was owned by Jim Jacobs and Bill Caton. No, I assure you, everything you've ever seen. Tyson had access to it and he watched it relentlessly. And he sees something in Tyson Fury, Mike. The same thing you and I see. You're smiling over there, but you see the same thing I see. We see that Tyson Fury is a throwback fighter. He's a pure fighter. He's a pure old-fashioned pugilist. And we saw 36 minutes of that in Dusseldorf, underneath the roof in that stadium in November 2015. That was brilliant. That won't have been lost on Mike Tyson. That won't have been lost on the ghost of Customato and the men that truly guided Mike Tyson. Because that was brilliant, what we saw in the arena. So I'm not at all surprised he points that out. But then he also spots and sees that rawness, that rugged, that heart and that love that we've also got for Anthony Joshua because we've seen Joshua develop and come up against hardship come up against guys he shouldn't have beat as an amateur who he just managed to beat or just managed to lose against we've seen that develop so I'm not at all surprised Tyson knows his boxing that's a simple fact now bear in mind you can't say that about most fighters Mike in fact it's about Hey, it's about one in ten that you can actually say it about because they always revert to the same argument. Well, I've been, I've had 38 fights, 42 fights, 78 fights, 63 fights. It doesn't mean a thing. I cross the road every day. I wouldn't know how to lay the tarmac. And in terms of Tyson Fury, if only he could hear that oh. and, and listen to that respect from somebody like Mike Tyson. You know, his great gripe after winning the title and beating Klitschko on that night that you say, OK, not a great fight, but what a great night. And if he could listen to somebody like Tyson, because his great gripe was that nobody gave him the credit, the credit for what he did. And yet within boxing, there is tremendous credit. And in fact, most judges, including Lennox Lewis, say that would, would that fight happen now? then Tyson Fury would have the edge over Anthony Joshua. I mean, it's really difficult now to understand how much an edge might have been taken off Tyson Fury with a, by with whatever time. time he gets back. Yeah. But there is no question that he's still young enough to reclaim the skills that he had on the night against Vladimir Klitschko and to make that the biggest fight in the history of British boxing. Oh, well, you know, you, you, you've given me an idea there. I mean, I'll make sure that Peter Fury uh, gets a copy of this. Make sure that Tyson Fury listens to this because why can't they reach out to Mike Tyson? Why can't Mike Tyson make a flash visit to Bolton and spend a couple of days in the gym with them? That's the sort of thing Tyson likes, remember, Mike. That's what that's what he likes because in Bolton they'll be able to go and look at pigeons. And I mean, I'm not I'm not I'm not generalising here about people that live in, in Lancashire. Tyson Tyson is a pigeon fancier. That's what he has. He still has pigeon coops in his four million pound house in the gated community wherever he's living at the moment in Las Vegas. So he could double up. He could go and look at pigeons. What's more, he could repeat one or two of those sentences for Tyson Fury's ears. And that, as you say, would spark Tyson Fury. He also spoke there, Steve, about this prospective contest between Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor. You know, I was looking at the weekend, Steve, at some of the odds and I described it there to Mike Tyson as a circus act and a freak show. If you look at the odds for Anthony Joshua against Joseph Parker, yeah. Anthony Joshua is 20 to 1 on to win. So you've got to put on 20 quid to win a single pound. Yeah. Floyd Mayweather is only 10 to 1 on no. to beat Conor McGregor. <sighs> Joseph Parker to beat Anthony Joshua is 10 to 1. Conor McGregor, and this is a cross... The, you know, the main internet bookmakers, the high street bookmakers, as, as they're known as well. Conor McGregor is 7-1 to one to beat Floyd Mayweather. Joseph Parker is 10-1 to one to beat Anthony Joshua. So if we're dismissing the fight between Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather as a freak show... And, What's and, the sad about and, the heavyweight fight? And, and, and a one-sided <sighs> matchup that that is, you know, worth watching only because of its freak element, then what are we saying about... Anthony Joshua against Joseph Parker. And I have to say, you wouldn't argue with the odds. I'd argue with the odds relating to Mayweather and McGregor, but I wouldn't argue about those odds um, relating pa pa Parker, to Parker and Joshua. Parker and no, Joshua, no, no, not at all. What Tyson said there was Connor um, doesn't stand a chance if they, are, if they are just boxing. Well, Mike, 
I'm sorry to be a person that keeps saying, I told you so, but we've been saying it on this podcast since we launched it in the very last days of February of this year. Every time Conor McGregor and and, and Floyd Mayweather has come up, and it's come up five or six times because obviously we got together with, with Mayweather as part of one of the shows. It's a non-event. It is an absolute... It's a brilliant event, sorry. Let me rephrase that. It's not a fight. If it's boxing... Mayweather, it's not a case of Mayweather, Mayweather losing. Mayweather will not get hit. Whether it's five, five five-minute rounds or whether it's 12 or 10 three-minute rounds, he cannot get hit. It doesn't matter what Conor McGregor wears on his hands. He can wear a plaster, plaster of Paris cast. He cannot touch Mayweather. He, are, are people stupid? Are people mad? Are people crazy? Have a look at some of the great fighters that didn't touch, that didn't touch Floyd Mayweather. And even if he's lost a little bit with a bit of time, what do you think Conor McGregor is, a spring chicken? He's not a 22-year-old kid, for God's sake. He's had a hard, hard old life. It's a beautiful, crazy mismatch. And you're absolutely right. The essence of this fight is when he started laughing, when you said, would you go, Mike? And he started laughing, he said yes. Because to a person, man and woman, child and old man and baby girl. Everyone says the same thing. No, no, yeah, yeah I'd definitely go if you'd get me a ticket. I Everyone. Wonder, who says no to that fight? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what Customato would have thought about all that. But in cherry-picking so many of the topics that Mike Tyson refers us to, he spoke about Muhammad Ali and how he leaned on the wisdom of Customato. And, of course, it's one year on since the death of Muhammad Ali. I was lucky enough, Steve, to go to the funeral. I know both you and I regret, if that's the right word, that we were never around to cover Muhammad Ali live on fight night. But being in Louisville, as I was on that Friday morning, a red-hot Friday morning, and I stood on the corner of 9th Street and Muhammad Ali Boulevard, which was renamed about 30 years or so ago, waiting for the cortege to make its way from the outer edges of the town through the city and then out towards where Muhammad Ali grew up as a child with his brother Rudolph. And I was there for three or four hours because the cortege was